What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, last question for you because this was one of my favorite little parts of your uh, RSP. And, uh, I really wanted to just get your general. We talked a lot about running backs. What are your general thoughts about the running back position in the NFL currently? Because I just feel like there's a lot of people who just love to hate on this position and you, you cited it in your column there that, you know, people have wrote, writ some, writ, written some uh, articles about how they don't matter and blah, 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 blah. But really like uh, we champion the cause of running backs. We, we think that they matter a lot. We think that they're underappreciated. You could pay Adam Humphreys $10 million and nobody cares. But if you pay a running back $10 million, everybody's mad. Like, so just your general thoughts on the running back position in the NFL currently. Yeah. I mean, I understand the argument that they may matter less than they used to back in the seventies and eighties and the and the nineties when I was growing up and watching this game where you give it to one guy and he, and you know, he had several years and they played until basically their leg fell off and, <laughs> and, you know, that was, and those guys were true warriors. And, and now that they've softened the rules for defenses or for offenses so that you can basically interference is like, is much easier to get a call for or and that you know they can't really play f as physical as they once could against wide receivers you know that's open you up can't the hit field. the quarterback you can't hit the quarterback Makes so you easier to pass yeah of course so of course that means that you're going to have rules in favor of of passing the football and that running is going to to be a you're going to do that less often okay mm -hmm. but at the same time to say that it doesn't matter also means that you're not really seeing the entire field in terms of how, and I understand that play action, the threat of play action, even if you're not running the ball well, yields gains and it, and it, and it's productive. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is you still, when a player can run one uh, for one, you know, you do have short yardage situations that matter. You have end of game situations that matter. You know, you look at what the Titan, you look at the teams that have been sex successful and Super Bowl winning teams in recent years, even even in the past 10 years after they soften the rules, you're still looking at the Baltimore's, the Pittsburgh's, the San Francisco's that have gotten there. You're looking at the the New England Patriots who ran the ball a, a, a ton, the Atlanta Falcons who ran the ball a the ton. The Rams when they got the Rams. There. Yes. So running the ball sets up so many different things because you're creating looks that looks that are similar between run and pass and it forces defenses to account for that. And they still can't, the analytics people can't really measure that impact and that movement and that thought process well enough to really show how that registers. And then also at the end of game, because again, when you're closing out a game and you've worn down a defense and, and they say, Oh, it's not really worn down. Well, you need to watch defensive backs when they don't want to tackle Derrick Henry and what that looks like. Because right. They, they, you know, you just have to learn to understand what's the difference between a good tackle and one where someone's like, I'm just trying to wrap and hang on because I don't want to hit. I'm sore. I'm yeah. sore and I'm tired. I've had enough. You know? I've had enough, you know, I mean, and those are things that you have to kind of learn to study and, and understand that you, you know, the analytics people may not be experts in what um, the art of tackling is. You know, and what a good tackle or bad tackle is. They may just look at some of the, the drills that they're looking at and see a guy leaving his feet and hitting someone hard and going, oh, that's a great tackle. When you're like, well, technically, that's not even a good tackle. Um, <laughs> you know, you, know, you got to have your feet in the ground. You got to have your head up. You want to be able to be at a certain angle. You want to be able to drive through all these different football things that show you when those aren't happening and the guy had every opportunity to get in position to do those things, but there's someone bearing down on him. Business decision. Exactly. He made a business decision, and those business decisions come in the third and fourth quarter of games when a guy's gotten the ball and they're and they're being able to tear through people. Look at the Tennessee Titans through the playoffs this year. I mean, I didn't work out all the way because you met this eventual Super Bowl champions, but I mean, again, running got you where you were going. Yeah, uh, so exactly. I, I believe it's a very valuable thing still, and you're right. I mean, there's definitely it is easier to pass the ball, but I, I also feel like there's a lot of non-quantifiable things that the running back does and, that. 
and people don't understand what a good running back does. Like I hear these things about Ezekiel Elliott not being a good, being a, a top back, and it's just like that's ridiculous. Ezekiel <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott is one of the best backs in football, and when you look at what he does in terms of situations to create, even behind his good offensive line, when the line wasn't as good. You know, there's these things like micro movements. One of the things that I know I've talked about, Jay Moyer's talked about, um, and it's it's the small movements where you're where you maybe dipping the shoulder ever so slightly, or you're making a cut and a slight little turn of the hips to avoid the defender being able to even get a hand on you. In addition to the move that you make, these small little moves, Alvin Alvin Kamara is absolutely great at it. Um, you know, and the ability to do these things to create yardage is a you know, separates top backs. And it's also about being able to diagnose and turn gains out of losses, transform losses into gains. And, and they do that very, very well. And what I think a lot of people don't understand is that there's a lot of running back talent in the league, you know, and there's very few opportunities to play that position. And so as a result of that, yeah, you can get some guys who are free agents and it's kind of like shooting guards in the NBA. You can get them off the street And they can probably give you some production in a given week. They may not be able to give you the same level of production as these top starters, but there's, but that's the point is that there are a lot of guys who can play, but there's very few positions for them to be able to maximize. And there's also, it's also hard to be able to do all the different skills that are demanded of running backs. And that's why they also do things with committees and it's a high injury position. Right. So, if the, if anything, the whole don't pay a running back, the only argument I would have is there is that they've discovered that these guys can't stay healthy because it's a demanding position, and therefore they, they'd rather be wrong about letting them go too early and yeah. caught holding the bag. Then got caught holding the bag. All yeah. right, man. Well, I really appreciate what you got, Jay. I was just going to say I really love the analogy that you had in the, in the rookie scouting portfolio. Again, hit him up. Matt Waldman, RSP.com. You got to read that scouting portfolio uh, about how the talent of running backs in the NFL. You compared it to like if a, if a running back walked into an acting audition, the guys that are there is like Brad Pitt and uh, I, I can't remember all the actors you Dustin named Hoffman off. Dustin Hoffman and right. Benedict Cumberbatch and <laughs> Leo. You know, you know, yeah, all the, all the, you know, a whole bunch all a listers all the a listers exactly and then if if they want to go a different direction they can hit clive owen or J- J- uh anthony bordeaux or edward norton like it was just there's but 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 wider or uh, quarterbacks like there's just like b-roll people in there and, and anybody that can remotely meet the criteria is a first round pick and you compare <laughs> yeah, like let, yeah leonardo what, dicaprio in that quentin tarantino movie you know where he's like playing, once upon a time in hollywood on hollywood you know his his actor in that version would probably be like a quarterback you <laughs> right. know, yeah. in the league in that comparison. Man, I got to rewatch that thing because I watched all three hours of it or whatever. And I, I didn't understand. I didn't know what I, I feel like I missed something because I didn't get it. I didn't, I don't know what, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> Well, we got time on our hands now. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> There's ever a time to wa- rewatch a three hour movie. Now's the time. <laughs> I just went back to True Detective, so that's oh nice. I just started. I watched the first season of that, and then I'm going to go to. The, I I skipped the second season because I heard it wasn't yeah. great, but I may no. wa- go watch that. But I love the third season. The third, third season was the fantastic. third was a good bounce back there. Yeah, third was good. Second second's okay. Okay, that's okay. Okay, I'll give it. A shot. All right, all right. Well, Mr. Waldman, we'll. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. And uh, no, <laughs> no, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you for hanging out for so long. I know for real. Uh, you ran, yeah, you ran a half pleasure. marathon with us, and we appreciate it. I hope those nipples are all right. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I I, unlike Ed Helms, I think I don't, I don't wear those kind of shirts. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, he got the reference. I like it. All right. Well, again, check him out on Twitter at Matt Waldman. Make sure you go by the Rookie Scouting Portfolio because there is so much useful information over there. It's, you can find it at MattWaldmanRSP.com. This guy's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. I hope to see you again if you're ever in charleston please hit us up and we can go down to revelry which is our one of our sponsors it's a great little beer spot and, and, and enjoy a beverage if if that's what you so desire or we can just hit the beach and uh we but but again man we really appreciate your time i know you're a busy guy and uh but you're the man so we yeah. really appreciate it i appreciate it. you guys ask great questions it was a fun program you guys are just you know fun to hang out with and and uh, I think we'll avoid the beach because you can see I just went out on my deck and I look purple right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> All 
too much time in the film game, I think. That's yeah. Funny. All right, man. Well, stay safe out there. And uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks again, Matt. Thank you.